has an advantage of experience. You cannot use experience against him. Every spirit Jesus casted out is still in the earth. Do you know a spirit called seducing spirit in the Bible? Herein lies the revelation of what Satan really wants. Seduction has no power over you until it unites with a need. You don't worship Satan by worshiping Satan. You worship Satan by worshiping anything that is not God. Anything that is not God, even if it came from God, is an idol. An idol is anything you derive your confidence from. An idol is anything that qualifies to earn your loyalty. Everywhere you see the Antichrist system, there must be expressions of worship. And can I tell you, day and night, there are people bowing down to Satan. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. Like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it peaks, spreads its wings. That's what we call soaring. It does not fly. The eagle soars. Every spirit Jesus casted out is still in the earth. The spirits that oppress men today, the bodies that they are oppressing is not the first. They, have, they are used to occupy many, many bodies. That is why you see Satan has an advantage of experience. You cannot use experience against him. You only use the forces of victory that have been given through Christ. In terms of experience, they have longevity of stay. They have entered and possessed and oppressed and manipulated too many human bodies. You are not the first preacher and you are not the first church to receive an onslaught from Satan. Using experience may be a very weak tool to bring in victory to yourself. Now, thanks be to God, the Bible says, which causes us always to triumph. Hallelujah. Are we still together? We are discussing that which makes a man usable, not just available. And number one, we said the state of your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, in your journey in ministry and in your journey in life and destiny, you will confront many things that will want to challenge the position of God in your life. For instance, fame. For instance, persecution. In fact, it says, what shall separate us from the love of God? Then it begins to list. It there is a concise list. I hope you know that both good and bad things can disrupt God's position in your life. For instance, there are people today who keep saying, Lord, I love you with all my heart. Until the day somebody gives you a hundred million cash or one billion, the appetite for prayer dies as you are receiving that money immediately. Because you find out that many of your prayer requests was driven by your need for bread and tea. And now the passion to pray and to fast is no longer there. How about when God announces you as a man of God and everybody already knows you as a man of God? What is the need to study again? What is the need to pray again? What is the need to fast again? After all, the nations know you. You see that? There are many people who leave God in the face of plenty. There are many people who leave God in the face of glitz and glamour. They leave God in the face of when they evolve to versions of, the, of themselves that the nation celebrates. You see, many of them will leave the things of God. So before you begin the journey with God, he probes you and says, let me work on you and furnish you to become a vessel unto honor. There is a level in life when you grow in terms of increase financial increase or in influence there are certain groups upon the earth that watch the growth of men like a meter when you hit a certain threshold they will come and meet you they will sell you ideas and say join us become part of us and there are privileges you will enjoy if you have not met them they are coming just keep rising i assure you by the god of heaven you know what i'm talking about and you know i'm not lying in every state, in every city, in every region, and in every nation, there, there are groups of people mandated by the devil, whether they know they are used by him or not. You keep rising. Let your company keep rising. Let your ministry keep rising. One day there will be a knock on your door, spiritually or physically. You will be called into a conversation and they will say, we are proposing to you this. Now you will understand what the Bible means when it says, what shall it profit a man when he gains? Show me the market where you do that kind of business. 
that you gain the whole world and lose your soul. If I want to sell my soul now, call the name of the shop for me that I will go. What shop in Enugu receives souls and gives them the world in exchange? Yet the Bible says there is a mysterious marketplace on earth where what you sell is not spare part. Where what you sell, are we together? Is not clothes. The commodity is your very soul. And there are men, that market is a busy market till tomorrow. Satan proposed it to Jesus. He said, come. The third temptation. The first temptation of Jesus is the first temptation that every man will go through. The temptation of need, bread, your food. Turn this stone to bread. Manipulate ministry to satisfy your hunger. Manipulate the people that it is within your power to turn stones to bread. And by the time hunger is there, he will not come when you are full. He will come when there is crisis in the ministry. He will come when you need to send your children to school and says, remember you are a prophet. Can't you just call some numbers and somebody will come and give you money? Can't you quote, can't you prophesy the account number of the person and receive 10 million? Why struggle and have to go through the cross when you can just bow to me and have the world now? Can I tell you? You must survive that number one temptation. There are men who have fallen like a pack of cards because they could not survive it. If you are not hungry, your temptation will not be about food to eat. Satan is not stupid. He will come to you. Do you know a spirit called seducing spirits in the Bible? The Bible says, the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons. Is that in your Bible? You know how seduction works? Seduction has no power over you until it unites with a need. There has to be a desire in your heart for seduction to work. Am I right on that? If you are looking for a political position, chances are excellent that the weapon, the devil, the seducing spirits will operate in your life with respect to that desperate need. So for Jesus, because he was hungry, having fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the spirits came. The devil came himself and said, you are hungry, Jesus. Don't tell lies. I know you are hungry. Remember, you are the way, the truth, and the life. You are hungry. Turn this stone to bread. Turn this stone to bread. Abuse the use of it. Manipulate that power to grant your selfish and mundane desires. And Jesus said it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Second temptation that everybody must survive is the temptation of maintaining your spirituality in the face of greatness. The Bible says he took him to a holy, the top of a holy mountain of the temple and told him, fall down there. That is the temptation of great men. The moment you become great and you are spiritually vibrant, the next temptation is be careless with your spiritual life. Fall down. After all, it is written, he will put his angels charge over you and abuse of grace and mercy. They will bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your feet against a stone. Don't pray. You are still anointed. Go for the conference without preparing. Even while on stage, you are full of revelation. Something must come for you to preach. Is it not just to preach and collect your money or honorarium and, and go back? That is the temptation of great men. So the moment you become great, know that your spiritual life is the first point of attack, not your church, your life. He took him to a holy city and said, fall down. Throw yourself down. After all, he will put his angels charge. Will the angels watch you go down and not protect you? Is it not written that he shall put his angels charge over you? They shall bear thee up on their wings lest you dash your foot against a stone. Temptation number three, that all men must survive. The Bible says that Satan, this one, eh? Satan took him to an exceeding high mountain. 
Mountains in scripture talks about spheres of influence. He took him there and the Bible says he showed him all the glories of the world in a moment. The kingdoms of the world, Matthew 4 says, and the glory of them. Question, show me where that mountain is today that you stand upon and you can see the glories of all the world and the kingdoms. And here's what he proposed to him. Verse 9. All these things I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Southeast, herein lies the revelation of what Satan really wants. He's not interested in your church. He's not interested in your money. He's not even interested in the child. He's not interested in your name or your fame. It looks like he's attacking all those things. And you may be saying, why is Satan interested in my marriage? Why is he interested in my children? Make no mistakes, he's not interested in them. This is what he's interested in. Please give us that scripture. That you will fall down and worship me. Everywhere you see the Antichrist system, there must be expressions of worship. Remember Nebuchadnezzar? 90 feet stature of solid gold and he says after you hear the sound of worship everybody bow down mm. that is why the greatest expression of your loyalty for god is not just in your service it's in your worship your worship your worship oh be lifted Above all other gods, we lay our crown and worship you. You be lifted above all other gods, we lay our crown and worship you. Oh, glorious God, we praise your name. We lay our crown and worship. Many of you have no idea what happens in the kingdom of darkness when the saints worship. A picture of the worship in heaven was given to us in Revelations. That when they said worthy is the lamb that was slain the bible says the elders will cast their crown and everybody bows before one king this is all satan wants transgenerational allegiance that is the reason why courses have been programmed across every family to make sure that there will always be a representation somebody who will represent worship and loyalty and allegiance to satan even to jesus he said bow and worship me it's not that i want to hold man i don't need man for anything i don't need his prosperity for anything ask people who are involved in cultism or involved in witchcraft or all kinds of things the only thing satan wants is anything that commits you and brings you to a point where he becomes God over your life. He can give you all the prosperity. He can give you whatever it is. That is the reason why the moment you want to prosper without your loyalty to him, he will fight you tooth and nail. You want to make money without me? He says, I wish above all things that he prosper and be in health. But make sure your soul prospers. It is that soul part that Satan does not want. Can I tell you, I made up my mind, I rather fail in ministry than worship the devil. I rather fail. You don't worship Satan by worshiping Satan. You worship Satan by worshiping anything that is not God. Satan is too smart to tell you, worship me. He will say, worship money, worship yourself worship your wife worship your husband worship your church worship your sermons and you do not know it's still idolatry worship your prayer life worship your fasting life even worship your bible study and while you are doing all of that you think i am worshiping god no anything that is not god even if it came from god is an idol 
so that you don't think i'm talking of going to the shrine to go and bow down satan is not stupid he has understood the world of men so he will tell you worship any other thing including yourself including your wife including your husband including ministry including money including your certificate by any means i allow you to worship any other thing provided it is not the god of heaven and can i tell you day and night there are people bowing down to satan but as they bow down to their certificates they bow down to satan as they bow down to their ministry every sunday there are many idol worshipers who do not know they are idol worshipers they would rather give up jesus than give up church they would rather give up anything <laughs> listen ladies and gentlemen can i tell you if you ever believe you ever believe that on your own without the pruning of the spirit you are worshiping god in spirit and the truth that state itself is proof that you are under attack I remember one time when God began to walk upon my heart I would pray and say Lord use me and it says to take away these idols from your heart and I'm saying idols me where again I have never bowed down to anything that is not God I came from a lineage of missionaries where is, where is an idol coming from then many of us are very quick to select what we think we are free from I'm free from pride I'm free from lust I'm free from all of these things God I'm free enough and he says that deception is bondage itself are we together I hope you are not feeling insulted this is a deliverance service so it's a proper deliverance service are we together oh glorious God we pray your name we lay our crown and worship you my glorious God I praise your name I lay my crown and worship you you be lifted above all other gods i lay my crown and worship you you be lifted above all other gods i lay my crown hear me I'm going to give us the next five minutes there are idols in our lives listen 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 before you start praying I want you to be sincere with the God of heaven when I was preparing this in the morning just cross-checking my notes I found myself praying and said Lord let me not come here and pretend before your people so I myself reveal what are the idols I'm not talking of witchcraft I know you will never go to a shrine but let me show you another shrine that is called a piece of paper lying down in your wardrobe you would rather give up God a thousand times than your PhD I'm not insulting it how about your church there are many of you if God says close your church now you will cause him to his face ah my means of bread my means of relevance I won't close it there are many of us, your idol is your anointing. There are many of us, your idol is your prayer and your fasting. You think because it's a spiritual activity on its own, it cannot be idolized. Satan is a master at using any other thing aside from God. An idol is anything you derive your confidence from. An idol is anything that qualifies to earn your loyalty including your fasting including your prayer including the abundance of revelation that you have 
including your intellect my bible says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding he says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path the next verse says verse 7 be not wise in your own understanding he says fear the lord and turn away from evil listen to me there are certain obvious idols like idolatry lust pride these are very obvious ones so when you find out that you are free from them you can flatter yourself to believe you are free i'm free from lust i'm free from pride i'm free from witchcraft i'm not a false prophet i'm not a fake person i love jesus and yet the master is still saying i cannot use you there is something about your heart oh god you are my god and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. For step by step. You lead me and I will follow you all of my days. I'd like you to cry before the Lord in one minute before we continue. Father, help my heart. Everything that has become an idol in my life, regardless what it is, Lord, I pray that in this conference, let it be dethroned. 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 